I try not to uh, talk about him in past tense because to me, he's still my child. So when somebody asks me, what kids do you have? I say, I, I have four kids. I mean, I have five kids, four boys and one girl, and I still include him in that text. That's my baby. That was my best friend. Uh, that's anybody who knows me, and I'll tell you, that was my guy. And that's my man. When you see me, you saw him. Uh, going into the, going into his the last weeks of, of his life that he served here. He um, he had got suspended from school, and that's why I, that's why I like saying that. Don't take it as I, I place him as like he was an angel to the public. No, he wasn't, but he was my angel. He was my child. So he had got suspended from school uh, from being, for being in an unauthorized area, but they deemed as unauthorized area of the school. So his suspension, really, it was, a, it was an internal suspension where you still go to school and you do after school events or whatever. He literally got suspended for not telling whose bag he had on. He had a backpack on his back that was given to him by his friend, which included a screwdriver and a baggie, which the baggie had residue from marijuana in. Did I know, was I aware that he was smoking marijuana? No, and today I'm still not aware of that. And the reason why I say that is because they did a toxicology report. The toxicology report showed that he had traces of marijuana in the system. Did I know? No. Do I know today? I still don't know. Um, so he was suspended for that. And that didn't make him a bad kid. That made him a teenager what teenagers do. So I'm going into this story. I'm going to take you somewhere. Young young brothers and sisters, I'm going to take you out somewhere with this. Be careful what you do in life. Be careful what you do on social media. Once you post it, you can't take it back. You probably can delete it, but it will always remain there. Trayvon posted pictures of himself shooting the bird on social media. The defense attorneys took those pictures and they said, and they took the pictures and they compared the pictures to the pictures that we had posted. They said, this is Trayvon Martin, right? So the thing is, this is all, we are all Trayvon Martin. So obviously, you guys are on social media shooting the bird that's how society has deemed us. See, what they do, they have a tendency of taking the negative or what they call the negative, and they make it their own story. They can take a negative image, and they will assassinate the character of Pope John Paul I, II, and third if he did something that they didn't feel was not in content of what the Pope was supposed to do. So they took the pictures and they started posting them there and all, all these. And, and, and I'm a realist and you have people that are for you and people that are against you. So what they had was they had half of the country, the country is divided. It was divided then, it's been divided before us, and it's going to be divided on gap for us. So we had all of these uh, we had right wing groups, we had the lobbyists, we had uh, the racist groups, all of them had the picture in San Diego. Yeah, this is the real train on the way. And they had depicted them and put whatever kind of captions under it. And as a parent, when you start to see these all these images and all these negative things about the child that you raised and the child that you know that 
none of this is lying to you. So you start, now you start to wonder. You don't second guess yourself, you start to wonder the mindset of the person who calls you your fellow country. So why is it when, and I said it and I, I, and I continue to say it, why is it when African Americans get in a situation, the first thing you hear about is criminal history, anything that he's done negative, or just something plain bad. Why not, why, why can't the individual be eulogized how the family wants him to be eulogized? Mike Brown situation. One of the professors uh, or someone commented on it today. Um, and I think the comment was the first thing you heard about his arrest report. It's a distraction. It's a distraction to get us off track on what is really going on. We're talking about unarmed teenagers in the land of the free. This is supposed to be the most predominantly, uh, this is the country everybody wants to come to. This is the land of free home and free. So why can't our children get the same treatment as other ethnic groups children can? Why do we have to be so scrutinized? Why do we have to, why do we have to be so defensive? Everything that we do, we, 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 everything is being published now. Everybody wants to post a video of uh, police brutality. And it should be recorded, and it should go on record, and we should take notice to it. But at the end of the day, all of the crime that's going on, and all of the murder that's going on, it's not just white people killing blacks. We are killing ourselves at an alarming rate. We are doing more damage to our society, to ourselves, than anybody has. And, and we need to start, we as a community, we as leaders, we need to start focusing on, on those situations. It shouldn't have to be, we, we, every life should matter. So it shouldn't have to be uh, uh, Mike Brown or Trayvon Martin or Jordan Davis at his lead. If Little Pookie killed Ray Ray. That should be the news. Because that child's life is just as important as my child's life. All our children's lives should matter. So it shouldn't matter who killed the individual. Let's focus on why we killed the individual. Let's focus on the justice that should have come behind it. Randy, I think that, that we don't get the attention in the, in the black on black crime. Why? Because if I kill this young man right here, it's going to be, they made, the, they made the first 48 for a reason. I will be apprehended within that first 48 hours. No ifs, ands, and buts. White individual kill them. We have to go through so many, we have to jump through loops, we have to jump through obstacles just to get somebody to hear us. So now we've got some attention. First thing, Fox News, and, and, and I'm not biased, but Fox News, I do not watch. I don't watch CNN, HLN, Fox News, I don't watch because Fox News is going to take every story that's, that's in the African American communities, and Hannity is going to destroy it. That's my personal opinion. So, with these cases going on, you'll see we need, uh, we honestly need someone to bring attention to these cases. We may not all agree with Reverend Sharpton and, and, and how he moves about, or Reverend Jackson, how they move about, but somebody has to come into our communities and share some light on the situation. Somebody has to bring attention to these situations. And I can honestly say, had it been had it not been for uh, Reverend Sharp, you guys probably wouldn't know about Trayvon. And that's the God on this truth because our lawyer,
attorney Crump called Barry Sharpton and said, Barry Sharpton, I got a case you need to look at. And they, everybody was sold on the fact that they were good watchmen. Loaded gun, kid walking home with nothing. Everybody was sold, he was gonna be arrested. What did the kid do? The kid didn't do nothing. There was no evidence that's, that claimed that Trayvon Benjamin Martin had been doing anything wrong. So, Central Florida is a, it's a small community, very small. Uh, so it's, it sits between uh, Daytona Beach, Florida, and Orlando, Florida. So it's, it's and, 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 and I call it like it is, and it's, it's not being biased, but plain and simple, it's a good old boy country, good old boy city. They, the, the, the state attorney from Santa Florida had his mind made up. He wasn't going to, I mean, they, they really had, he wasn't going to bring down an indictment. Um, he felt that George Zimmerman had to get nothing wrong. So as a parent, what do you feel? First thing you feel is, my kid is dead, man. They on the ground. And nobody feels that there was no wrong doing in that. Confrontation, yes it was. But what do we teach our children? Do we teach our children? You see a pedophile coming at you, just stand there and let them apprehend you or do whatever you're gonna do? I hope not. I know in my house I teach my children, don't start confrontation, but you have the right, you have every right to defend yourself. See my kids, they 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 went through all the conflict of resolution. They know how to solve conflicts. I have a 21-year-old, uh, and he probably understands conflict and resolution because me and him jaw jack back and forth all the time. I don't understand what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, we gotta we gotta put it in their heads early. You know, when you have a situation where it's, and it, it doesn't have a it doesn't has it doesn't have to be a, a, a big conflict. It can be a, a disagreement between you and your classes. So instead of getting up from the table, sit there and work out a solution, resolve this. Don't always have to be in physical. It, it, far too often we get caught up in to our masculinity. And we want to be, you know, uh, I'm show them. I'm show them. So we get it, we get caught up in our ego. Actuality. The best ego is the one who can sit out and be rational about it. I can sit out and talk. That's what human beings do. We sit out and discuss it. We can discuss things. We sit out and formulate solutions on how we're going to work this out instead of bashing each other head because at the end of the day, what's going to happen? You're going to be in the ER. I'm going to be incarcerated. Lose, lose situation. So my kids were, my kids are first in conflict and resolution. Grandfather, ex-police officer, one of my mentors and best friends and baseball coach, he's an ex-police officer. And he had, he had a camp, and called, it was called Youth of America. So he, and I knew how strict he was. So he kind of encouraged me uh, while my kids were small. Send them to the camp and, and just see how it worked out. I didn't know what they were teaching them at the time. I knew that they were going there, they would play horseshoes in the daytime, and shoot. Uh, and I don't even know if they still had a little game around where they had like the little circles on the pool table. And so they would play all these little games. A little bit I know educate them for some they will come back and play a big part about like 2012. He was taught how to obey the law. He was taught that if he was approached by an individual, by the law, by authority, by someone who was who was married, he was taught how to be married. He was taught how to respond. See, far too often. As adults, when we approach 
younger people who approach me in the wrong way. So if you approach me in a hostile way, you're gonna get hostility back. So I kind of, you know, I kind of played, I kind of did the Discover Channel, uh, private eye in my own way, and I know what that happened. I came to my own conclusion on how my son got killed. And there's no way, and, and I will take this to my grave. There is no way that my son' life was ended without him putting up a fight. And I can truly say that as an African American parent, as an African American man, had it been any other way, had he got murdered without fighting back, I would be mad. I would be mad. And the simple fact is, fight for what you believe in. And his life was worth fighting for. So it doesn't, it, it doesn't bother me about, they say he bashed his head in the country. Who knows that? That's the story of the murder. We don't know that to be true. See, sitting in the courtroom taught me a lot of, a lot of things. The defense attorney walked in the courtroom with a slab of concrete that probably weighed about 50 pounds. And he dropped it in the middle of the courtroom floor. And he had the audacity to look at the jury and say, Trayvon Martin did have a weapon. And we sit there like, you know, where's the human side? I know you're doing your job. Where's the human side? Um, so, in essence, he was saying, yeah, Trayvon had this big, this big piece of concrete bashing in towards Simmons' head. My, 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 my thing was, as a prosecuting attorney, why don't you have scenes, crime scene photos saying that no, this piece of concrete was still intact. Why didn't you have crime scene photos that showed Trayvon Martin walking home? One of my biggest issues with the state of Florida, and it's not, it's not the judicial system all over, I just have a personal issue with the state of Florida. How can you defend somebody if you never show the public who that person is. That's one of the biggest problems I had. Out of all the media that, all the, all the attention that was given to that case, there were no character witnesses called for Trayvon Martin. The character witnesses came from the defense attorney. So we, in the state of Florida, what we're doing now, we let the defense attorneys be the character witness for the victim. So if you give me an opportunity to be a character witness for somebody who I'm, I'm going to depict, I'm going to scrutinize, I'm going to demoralize, I'm going to do my best to show the world that this was a third, third class citizen. He didn't deserve the right to live, and he got what he deserved. And that's what the defense attorneys did. So now I'm in a position, I'm in a situation where I'm supposed to get up and speak free and feel good about the state of Florida, the state attorney's office. I refuse to. But what I will do is get up and say that there is hope. And I can say that there is hope because proof is in the pudding. Michael Dunn just got convicted of first degree murder. But it shouldn't have had to go to a second trial. How can you convict an individual for attempted murder? I, he was convicted for shooting in the car at the other individuals. I want her on anybody with harm, but you don't convict him for killing a 17-year-old sitting in the backseat listening to 